So uh, my life today, and your, I feel your Holy Ghost, your life has been, been designed and been set up for you to live on hope. So God's never going to let you be comfortable in any particular place. Everybody looking for that place of rest. The rest is in Christ. But in the rest is where the journey starts. Because when you rest in him, you stop trying to do it yourself. But it means now that you're living this eternal plan of God that's been ordained from the foundation of the world. Which means that every experience you have is already finished. Amen. Every person you walk that walks into your life, they didn't just show up. It's, a, it's a, a meticulous planning God that designed your life. Everybody you come in contact with, every experience you have, it's already been this. Can you receive what I'm saying? If you, if you receive eternal life, you know that what I'm going through now is just temporal. So no matter what kind of pressure I'm under, this is only temporal. If I believe that God is, and I put a promise on it, I don't feel it, I don't see it, but I know if I hold on to it, he has to perform it because I'm living what? In hope that whatsoever he promised, he is also able to perform it. That's the word. That's good. Am I giving you some peace here? Yes, yes. So as I close, I need to, I need, I need to, I need to. This is the first close. It gotta be at least three, right? I, I, I wanna, I wanna try to, to release to you what, what God is dealing with me on. And, uh, I've been, uh, this, you know, my wife has been witness. I've been in this place of prayer, this two o'clock place. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Two o'clock in the morning. Y'all don't get up and pray. You're being disobedient. You sit there and complain when God wake you up two o'clock in the morning. That's prayer time. Someone say amen. You sucking your teeth, rolling over your bed, come on, you don't know. I wish I could go to sleep. Get up and pray. He calling you to pray. Somebody, I, I'm in somebody's business right now. He calling you to pray. Don't, don't go make that turkey sandwich. That's not a fort. I can put it. He calling you to, to, to pray. God loves you so much that you you and I really have no clue about what you really mean to God. We don't. We can't connect to it. You, you know when you can connect to it? It's at moments in your prayer. When the Spirit moves and the Spirit gets heavy in your prayer, all of a sudden there's a connection between you and God, and you feel His love, and you know how important you are to Him. But when the prayer is over, humanity kicks in again, and you think you are who you think you are, and not who He says you are. I should get paid for that right now. But see, when you come out of when you come out of your prayer, you start thinking you are who you think you are, and if you want to be honest, you don't think about you, but you show us. Let me try those people on this side over here. If you want to be real honest about it, who you show us that you are in church is not who you think you are. Wow. Wow. Am I here with the right people? Some of y'all can't connect to this because, you know, but see, when you with your private self and the preacher's not there and the church folk ain't there and your mate, your husband, your spouse not there, see, you, you think about yourself differently than what you try to convince us because that's when the battle really starts. That's when the enemy really tries to convince you that you're nothing. That's when the enemy really begins to pull up all your weaknesses, even if he got to go back 20 years, to pull it up to convince you that you're a failure. Every little thing that you said wrong, he bring it back to you when you by yourself, dealing with yourself. When you come now, talk to me here. Y'all here, don't listen, listen, talk to me here. He reminds you of all your faults, all your shortcomings. He reminds you of everything about you that society does not accept. And if you're ever going to be used by God, you got to know that there's going to be a lot of things about you. Society is not going to accept. Oh, help me here right now. So, 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 am I talking to you? Let me done. I got five more minutes. I'm keeping time. So, can, can, can I talk to you? Yeah. You have been designed. God chose you. His love is so great. He set you up to be a showpiece. That's why you should never disqualify yourself based on your thinking or man's opinion. Oh, I'm preaching good here. Yeah. I, I told Pastor Finn, I said, when I feel like this, just be ready. Because either I have a real word or I don't need to be preaching. Because <laughs> it, it was a long day. But you, you have to understand that you are chosen, man. You are marked. Why, 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 why me? Why not you? Have you read the Bible to see who God uses? How often did God go into religion and put, to put, to put on somebody popular? He always on the hedges and the highways and the byways and putting up people who nobody want to deal with. I had the privilege to read the book of John again. Jesus always been healed people who wasn't believers. His, most of his miracles were people who were not a part of Israel. Who didn't have covenant with God. The 
Did you ever hear what I just said? So why not you? Why not accept that God pluck you ought to be different? You know, you know, you know it's hard about that for us because we want to be popular and we want to be accepted and we want everybody to like us. I'm closing because I'm getting in somebody's business. We, we, we want to be accepted by everybody in our house, everybody in our family. We want to be accepted by everybody in the job. And then we're accepted by people who don't care nothing about us anyways. And we want to be really honest about it. And then we end up denying ourselves who God really made us, thinking that we are who we think we are. And while we out dance you in church, when we sit down, we are who we think we are. And we want to stand up and be heard because we don't think we qualify. Because we have not accepted qualification in Christ. My God. I, I read the book of John, you know, Jesus said something really simple. He said, uh, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. And then you, you, you know, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. And if you continue in truth, the truth will make you free. And then they asked him, how are we going to be free? If we're not, if we Abraham seed, we was never in bondage to no man. But he said something real, real interesting after that when you read the Bible. He said, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. And religion, I'm, I'm talking to somebody and I'm done. Religion would take that scripture and say, Jesus said, if you commit sin, you're a servant of sin. That's not the spirit of the scripture. Have you ever heard that before? Jesus said, if you commit sin, he, no, no. When he told them about being made free indeed, and they say, how can we be made free when we're never in bondage? He switched right to the issue of sin. He said, if you acknowledge sin, you will always be a slave to it. That's a revelation. He was telling them, if you think you can commit sin, you will always be a slave to sin. But if you know that sin has been moved, then you'll be free. And you will only know that by what? Continuing in my word. God, Jesus, help me. Being my disciples. And then you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. He asked them, which of you could convince me of sin? What you know about any sin? Can I make you free here tonight? I'm really done. I, I'm getting to the hoop here in a minute. I just want to, I want to encourage you, man, that you, I want you to take a breath. God, help me to get out of this here. And I, I want to share with you what God has shared with me, General. Now, please hear me. It's way more to you than what you think, Ms. Vickers. Are you all hearing me over here? There is something that's been placed in you at your birth that's under all the clutter of your experiences. Let me say it again. If I, I'm, I'm there, I'm there. 8.15, I'm done. Mm, listen. Can I say it again? There is something. Gentlemen, love, if you're here tonight, hear me. The Holy Spirit drug you here to hear this. There is something placed in you at your birth, at the conception, by a divine God who controls all things. He puts something in there that's supposed to come out of you. The problem is the clutters of experiences and environments and iniquities and religion has got everything all messed up and clogged up. Glory to God. And if you and I want that thing to come out of you, we got to fight for it to come out. First of all, we got to believe that it's there. You got to believe that what you're dreaming is not a mistake. You got to believe that those impossible things that you dream and you think you can do, you got to believe that you can. You couldn't think it if it wasn't in there. If it wasn't already in your spirit, it couldn't come to your mind. You gotta believe that there's something been placed in you. That God God orchestrated your life for, for, for birthing that thing out of you. But it's under a lot of clutter. It's under everything your mama told you, that her mama told her, that her mama told her. She telling you you she told you you would never mark anything because that's what her mama told her. And all they doing is putting weights on you. Clutter on you. Clutter on you. So all that thing that the double who shot, that thing that's in your spirit, that's supposed to impact this world, it's still in there. Yes. But it's under a lot of clutter. Yes. So but we still can't free ourselves from religion. The judgment, the condemnation that we grew up under. I had a child tell me the other day that 
because uh, you know I, I was amen. I'm working with some children, some things, and and, and one of the children said to me, uh, "But you told us we could go." I said, "Yeah, I lied." <laughs> and and yeah, but you supposed to be a preacher. How can you lie? I said, "You ain't been living long enough to know that." But he said, "My mama told me if I lie, I go to hell." <laughs> 